Is a pillow fort hangout a lame date idea? My F-33 friend's coming over his birthday this weekend, allowed where we are. He's been pretty down recently so I thought I could build a pillow fort in my living room and we could just chill out have some beers and watch movies. We've been friends for two years but it's one of those if we were in different situations we'd be together deals. Do that sauce and definitely do that, side note I'm rooting that situations change and you guys are together. I would love a pillow fort hangout date, you sound like a keeper. Ha 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 I hope so. Just make sure it doesn't turn into a feud between a pillow fort and the blanket hut. Good point. A lot of soft ordnance could be unleashed by both sides. Sounds like fun to me. Maybe throw in a low-key drinking game while you watch movies, every time a character does X you drink. Also, consider some snacks or a pizza. There'll definitely be pizza. I would just make sure you make it comfortable enough to spend legit time in. I'm 29 but have back issues. I would struggle to hang out on a mattress for hours unless I was flat on my back. Also, a lot of men are less flexible than women. For e.g., my husband can't sit on the ground cross-legged because his hips are so tight. I definitely do it up against a sturdy surface one can lean on and have lots of pillows for support. That's a really good advice, thank you. How do I, 25F, break up with my boyfriend, 30M, when he won't answer the phone? It was my boyfriend's 38th birthday yesterday and it did not go as planned. In the week leading up to yesterday, I asked him if he had any plans for his day and he said no. Therefore, I made a reservation at a pretty nice steakhouse in the area. I confirmed with him that I made the reservations for 8 and that I would pick him up on Friday at 7.30. On Monday as my gift to him, I spent about $200 on a custom tracksuit. He claimed to be so excited to wear it to dinner on Friday. On Wednesday, we hit a bit of a snag as he claimed that he needed an extra $200 to cover a bill that he came up short on. It kind of upset me because he knew about the bill ahead of time yet waited till the day before it was due to ask me to help. I brushed it off though and sent him the money as his second birthday gift. On Thursday night we texted till about midnight but he fell asleep soon after. I texted him happy birthday Friday morning and got no response. Around noon I asked him how his day was going, no response. At 4pm, I was like hey I haven't heard from you all day so I am unsure if we are still on for tonight. I need to know because I need to confirm with the restaurant. No response. I end up cancelling the reservation. A little bit later I end up on Instagram and I happen to see a flyer detailing a hotel kickback slash party for my boyfriend's birthday. My boyfriend never mentioned this party to me and since he's not very fond of surprises, I have a hard time believing he was not involved in planning it. Furthermore, my intuition is telling me that the 200 might have gone towards getting the hotel room. Around 8.40 p.m., 20 minutes before the hotel party, he finally answers me and says sorry I've been asleep all day. I tell him that I don't believe him and that I know about the party tonight. I was feeling kind of petty so I also said if you didn't want to spend your birthday with me, that's all you had to say. This is not the first time he's stood me up like this, in fact, his birthday last year went similarly to this. I'm not so much mad that he made other plans for his birthday, it's more the fact that he knew that I made this reservation and instead of just telling me he wanted to do something else, he just didn't answer and omitted even telling or inviting me to this party. This was especially hurtful because I just cried to him about how him not following through with what he tells me he's going to do hurts my feelings and reduces my trust in him. I think this is the last straw for me but I can't get through to him to even break up. My texts and calls have again gone unanswered all day and I'm at a loss for what to do. I've contemplated just sending a text but it doesn't feel quite right to break up with him after 1.5 years together in such a one-sided way. Any advice? Also am I justified in this being a deal breaker even though it was his birthday? How do I, 25F, break up with my boyfriend, 30M, when he won't answer the phone? Certified mail or singing telegram. 
tbh, if he's avoided you on both this and the last birthday, likely you are the side chick or something. You deserve better and should just act as if you are broken up. She's definitely the side chick. She dropped $200 on a tracksuit for this clown. I'm stereotyping and judging so hard right now but the kind of guy that would wear a tracksuit to a fancy steakhouse probably would be classy enough to have two girlfriends that don't know about each other. He's ghosting you. Ghost him back. He wants to play the silent game. Silliance is what he gets. Text him weird done and drop this loser for good. Yep dudes like this behave this way because they know the more they don't answer, the more it makes you tweak out and hit him up more. Makes them feel powerful. Definitely second texting him just the two words we're done and then blocking him. Trust me, when he deigns to respond to the breakup text, he'll die if his phone hits him with the undelivered message BC he will be expecting you to be sitting devastated at your phone, awaiting his response. To the above and you'll be the one having the last laugh on your way out. Also am I justified in this being a deal breaker even though it was his birthday? If nothing else tells you that you need to break up it is this question. This dude has your reality so messed up that you are actually asking if a guy who borrowed money from you for a party he didn't want you to go to while blowing you off for reservations you made for him should be broken up with. People are allowed to do whatever they want on their birthdays but this was god level asshole behavior. Don't even talk to him again. That will be your way of saying the relationship is over. You missed the part where he blew her off last year as well. WTF kind of a relationship have they been having between his birthdays? You are already broken up. This guy does not care about you. He is using you. Block him everywhere and go no contact, nothing good will come of you having any more to do with this person. I'm toxic toward my boyfriend but I don't know how to stop. I've already ruined so much of his life. My, 20f, boyfriend, 22m, and I have been together for two years. He used to have a job working for his family, his family is very verbally and physically abusive, but quit after I encouraged him because his grandpa hit and yelled at him on the job a lot, plus he made minimum wage. He used to have friends, they were all fake, talked bad about him behind his back, were racist said slurs to be funny, etc. He cut them all off because he said he wants to be better than that and doesn't want to surround himself with those types of people. He moved two hours away and he moved in with me. I'm starting to realize how depressed he is. He's cut off all his friends and family. He got a new job making 3x his salary but all the people are older and he hasn't made any friends. It took being with me for him to realize abuse and bigotry wasn't normal, so I feel like it was good he cut off all the these people who had bad intentions, but I also am afraid that I'm isolating him from the rest of the world. When I tell him my concerns, he says those were his choices and that all I did was help him see clearly and gave him the motivation to cut those people off. Am I being toxic slash abusive, and how can I stop slash help him? Edit, I'm asking because I come from a family of abuse and narcissists where it was normalized, and they believed they were perfect. I try to not be like that, and am very analytical of all my actions. I came into this relationship after cutting off all my old friends and family who were toxic to me. I had a habit of letting toxic people into my life because I didn't think I was good enough for good friends. Then I met him, and he admitted how poorly his friends and family were to him, and we bonded over it. He wanted to leave them behind too. I only ask now because it's to the point where I encourage him to meet new people, and he refuses. He says I'm all he needs. That's exactly how I felt when I was in toxic relationships. Like I didn't need anyone else but my abuser. I would never hurt him on purpose but now I'm afraid he wasn't really ready to leave his friends and family behind and just thought he was. I want him to have friends and support outside of me, because if I am being unintentionally manipulative I would want him to run for the hills because no one deserves that. I just see how ever since meeting me he's lost all his friends and family and isolated himself, so I can kinda see myself as the common denominator. I encouraged him, by encourage I mean he'd ask for my opinion and I'd give him my honest opinion, to leave his toxic family because they'd hit him, make him feel bad if he defended himself, and told him that if he didn't accept abuse he was disrespecting his elders. His friends would say racist slurs to him, they're all white, and it made him insecure that he wasn't good enough, 
but he put up with it because he didn't want to lose them. They'd say nasty things about him to me behind his back, and hit on me too because they didn't think I'd tell him. He told me he's known they were fake slash toxic before but didn't want to lose them. He swears I'm the least toxic person he's ever met. I promise I'm not trying to brag this is just what he says, and that I'm the only one he's ever met who treated him like he was good enough slash capable of doing anything. I know he's been treated poorly in the past, but now he doesn't want any other friends like I said earlier. He just wants to hang out with me. When I'm at work he just waits for me to get home and spends all my free time with me. That's what makes me feel toxic. I want him to have a life and friends, but I also can't force him to and he won't go to therapy. I've encouraged him to, but I can't force that either. The reason I ask is because I think by bringing on such rapid change, I was unintentionally toxic which I don't want to be. I try to stop myself anytime I feel like I'm not being genuine or helpful because I don't want to go down the road my family did. I don't want to be so narcissistic that I don't even realize I'm being the manipulative one. So I guess my question slash advice I'm seeking is, how can I make this situation better? If I've been toxic I want to know how to change that. I don't want to be blindly causing so many more problems in his life on accident and if I am toxic, I'd want to set him free so he could be truly happy without an abuser in his life. If everything you've said is accurate, I would say you've helped him do a lot of things that will be good for him in the long run regardless of whether you two are together. Sometimes it just takes time to settle into somewhere after a move. Encourage him to find people who share the same interests as him. A new club, book club, gaming, sports. I know it's more complicated with COVID but there are still ways to meet people. There are even apps made for people to make new friends. He needs to have support other than just you for both of your sakes same for you. Otherwise there is too much pressure on both of you to keep the other happy. I would consider you toxic if you were deliberately and consistently manipulating him and not letting him meet, build or maintain relationships with other people. Sounds like you just encouraged him to purge the negative and now he has a void. That's just a process though and can be fixed with some effort to put more positive things in his life. If you're self-aware enough to consider whether you might be toxic, you probably aren't toxic. I'm really curious how you got to the conclusion in your title that you are toxic. Do you have your own history of abuse, absentee parents, or whatever? Wounded people have a tendency to see something of themselves in each other, and if you're suffering too, there's a good chance that what you consider to be toxic, normal, appropriate, etc. are not in line with what's real and healthy. Or maybe it's just because you're young and don't have much other relationship experience. But in any case, in line with most of the other replies, if what you said is the whole story, it sounds like you're doing fine. He would do well to find some new guy friends to hang with, some fun activities to do. Is he into any team sports, running groups, hell? even bowling, and of course a job. You can be supportive but not nagging. Best of luck to you too. Just from looking up what makes someone emotionally abusive it's usually like they stop seeing slash talking to their friends and family, and isolating them, is moving hours away. You don't mean to be toxic on purpose it just happened that way and now he is isolated, but that isn't what I wanted for him.